nominees uh, for success and achievement. So please jo uh, join me in the toast. Come by. Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Ruko Hata. I co-directed Negative Space with Max Border. So Negative Space received a lot of support from France. Um, we had this amazing opportunity to live in, I'm sorry, I'm so tiny. <laughs> we had this amazing opportunity to live and work in France for nine months. Um, so I want to introduce my team member who's here. Um, my producer, Edwina Diab from Iki Films. And my co-producer, Jean-Louis Paddy from Manuel Com Studio. And um, amazing lead animator, Sylvain Deron. Um, we really had so much support from them and we really got to make the film that we wanted to make. So I'm so proud of them. Um, and I'm very, very happy to be one of the few female minority nominees this year at the Academy Awards. Uh, thank you so much for your support and thank you for coming tonight. Well, thank you, uh, Council General Chiba and Vice Chair Harai, um, for organizing this beautiful event that honors the Oscar nominees of Japanese descent. It is such an honor to be nominated for an Oscar, and it is important that we come together and celebrate our cultural achievements. The Boss Baby is a sibling rivalry story about brothers falling in love with one another. And as a mother of three boys who played an active part in their own sibling rivalry story, of course, I identify with the Boss Baby and its message. That love is not a finite resource. That love is an ultimate growth resource, and there is definitely enough love for everyone. But the bigger message for communities across the globe is that loving one another is having compassion and understanding for the other, which is, the message, which is a message worth listening to today. For our director, Tom McGrath, he was the boss baby in his own family, and the film is actually a love letter to his own brother, which was so well received by audiences around the world. Thank you for recognizing me and the boss baby tonight, and a big thanks to the talented and diverse group of artists at DreamWorks Animation Studios. And I would also like to introduce two very important individuals who worked on The Boss Baby who are with me tonight, Marie Soria and Maya Kambe. And, um, I'd like to And I found this magazine and I found the article about the Dick Smith. And Dick Smith did this makeup on Hal Holbrook as an Abraham Lincoln. And when I saw this image, I thought, okay, this is the one I have to do, I really want to do. And I didn't realize because it's all special effects makeup was almost used for the horror films, and I didn't like horror films. And I found this out about this. There's a, something different in uh, special effects makeup. And, and the next day, I went to the library, and I took my own life cast, which is a, like a face cast, and started to make uh, makeup. And this was uh, me as a Lincoln. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so I contacted Dick Smith, and. <laughs> And I contacted Vic Smith and I wrote him what would be the best way to be a special effects makeup artist. And he wrote back to me literally like 10 days. And he's, he told me that uh, there's no good school out there and the best way is to learn by yourself. And if you come up with a new makeup, just send me a picture and I will give you a comment about it. And so that's how we started a relationship of a mentor and uh, protege. And so uh, that was 1987. And he said, okay, next year, I will be supervising Japanese film called Sweet Home. And he recommended me to the uh, uh, Japanese makeup artist, Etsuko Egawa. She's sitting in front of that, everybody. And I'm, I'm standing behind her. And uh, so this was the first job I got. And I was doing uh, this job in Japan, and I had the opportunity to work with even like a Mr. Akira Kurosawa, and I was really fortunate. And, um, and my dream was to come to this country and to do uh, special effects makeup in Hollywood. 
And it was really hard because it's a visa situation and the green card, green card is not easy to get. And so I contacted uh, my friend who is Eddie Yang and he's uh, hiding behind uh, Dick Smith and we became a good friend when we were doing a sweet home. And so Eddie just started to work for Rick Baker. And Rick knew about me from Dick Smith and from other artists. And so Rick decided to hire me right away. And I got a phone call from Rick's assistant a week later. And, and, and she said, uh, you can move to Hollywood whenever you can, and we can take care of everything, you know, the visa and everything. So uh, I left the school and I started to work on uh, this uh, mini graph. <laughs> and this is the first job I did, and, um, and Rick got the Oscar for this. And the next one was a Grinch. And uh, this was, um, uh, I was on set and I was doing application on the makeup on Eddie, uh, not Eddie, I mean uh, Jim Carrey. And uh, he was uh, quite, uh, you know, I, I decided not to talk about him in front of the press because <laughs> I would be in trouble. Uh, and uh, so uh, this job really affected me and almost uh, I started to hate about the film business. Oh, wow. and, <laughs> And after that, I did a uh, print of this. Uh, this is myself as a chimp uh, for the test wow. makeup. And this is uh, one of the characters I did on a Tim Roth. And actually, uh, this character was supposed to be uh, Gary Oldman. And we did a live cast and started to do a design. But uh, he turned down the role, and Tim Roth was hired as a replacement. And uh, so this is uh, around 2001. I started to do a portrait of Dick Smith because he would be, uh, he was going to be 80 years old on 2002. And so I wanted to do some kind of special thing for him for the birthday because you know, I learned a lot from him. And I started to do a, a portrait sculpture. And I thought, okay, well, if I do a life size, it's not interesting, and I I made a portrait two times bigger than life size, and this is a uh, result. <laughs> and when I made this, uh, I really realized how powerful this will be, and and I was looking at how Dick reacted to it, and he was really touched by it, and he was crying, and also uh, I showed at the convention and. And many people who knew Dick Smith was really almost like some people was uh, had a teary eyes and really, you know, like uh, connected to it. And I thought, okay, well, maybe this is something I should do instead of film business. <laughs> but the problem was I didn't know how to make a living as a fine art artist. So you know, in the movie business is quite easy to make a living. It's a, you, know, you, can, you can make a good money out of it. But uh, fine art is quite different. And so I didn't know how to do that. And I kind of gave up at that moment. And, and then I did this uh, movie called Click, and Adam Sandler, and he will be kind of a, a character who gain weight and get old. And uh, we went through that, like a, kind of a, his life. And this is a test makeup as Adam Sandler as uh, 60 years old, and this is the overweight makeup. And we also did the makeup on uh, David Hasselhoff, and the old age makeup on this, on him. And Henry Winkler, and Asian. Yeah. And, uh, and after that, I walked with uh, Brad Pitt. Actually, I forget about this. Uh, this was the first time I was nominated for the Academy Award. And this is Brad Pitt, and I walked on Benjamin Button. And I, actually, I didn't do a makeup on him. Uh, what I did was I created uh, the head, the realistic head, to scan into the computer so they can animate. And these are the heads. And after that, I walked with Angelina Jolie on salt. And we did a kind of disguise makeup, and I made her look like a normal man, but she kind of freaked out. You know? <laughs> and, uh, she, she wanted me to leave 
her a little bit more. So kind of, you can see kind of androgynous looking makeup, but uh, she was happy about it. And this is Eddie Murphy, and we did uh, know of it, and he was uh, three different characters. And this is a Chinese old man, Mr. Wong, and this is Respicia. And I will show you some video. I'm sorry, I'm talk already talking ten, 10 minutes. <laughs> this is, a, uh, I'm showing the application of a Mr. Wong. And I didn't put, I didn't put this music. <laughs> So this process was about uh, 3 hours and 15 minutes. This is a video of uh, first test makeup. scan into the computer again. Uh, and this is Nicole Kidman, with uh, old age makeup for the Hemingway and Gen Hall. And this is this was the last movie I worked on called Looper. I had to make uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt look like Bruce Willis, <laughs> but younger. And I turned down once because I, I told them this is impossible. You have to get someone better, you know, like a look, look alike. But they said, okay, we already met a contract. So <laughs> I told them, and I turned down once, and they came back to me again. And I told them, like, uh, okay, as long as you pay me to do it, I won't guarantee the outcome. And if that's okay, I will do it. And so they, they were happy about the outcome, so it was fine. And so this was the last <coughs> film I worked on, and that was 2012. And I decided to leave the film industry because um, I had a better way to live my life. And, <laughs> and then I worked on the film industry. <laughs> Uh, I had a hard time in uh, India, so, uh, and I started to create a portrait again. And this is a sculpture of Abraham Lincoln. And this is uh, Andy Warhol, and you can see how big that is. This is me standing next to it. So what I'm doing right now is uh, I basically create a portrait of the people who inspired me and I show at the art show. And um, uh, this is a Cypro Valley. And a collector buys it and I make a living from it. And um, 
and one of the uh, actually Guillermo del Toro <laughs> actually who bought my sculpture of Dick Smith. <laughs> And uh, this is uh, when, uh, in South Korea, Seoul, uh, I was doing an uh, exhibition with uh, Warhol uh, paintings. And this is a process of making a portrait of uh, Frida, Frida Kahlo. And I work with uh, lots of Japanese people because uh, they are hard-working people. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to uh, ask for help from Japanese people. And, and this is the latest piece uh, of uh, Mark Ryden. And um, so, so I was doing this, and uh, Gary Oldman contacted me. Uh, it was the beginning of 2016, and he he said, "Okay, there is a project about uh, Winston Churchill." And uh, he told me that um, uh, if I would take this job, he will take that show. And if I'm not going to do that, if, if I won't do that, uh, he, he, we're not going to make a film. And he wasn't threatening me, just, <laughs> he was just uh, t telling me the situation. And I, told him, I asked him, uh, let me think about it for a week, because I already left the film industry. And um, you know, I felt like uh, if I go back to the film industry now, I feel like I betrayed my life. So, uh, but uh, as you, you saw, uh, my first inspiration was uh, makeup of uh, Lincoln, done by Dick Smith. And I wanted to do that kind of film for a long time, but I never had opportunity. Most of the movie I worked on was a comedy or sci-fi that uh, no one took it serious. And uh, finally, Gary brought me this uh, movie you know, I wanted to work on, and I, s I thought, okay, well, this could be the kind of once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I should take it. And so I took it, and uh, you, s you can see the trailer now. I'm really hoping that Gary will have an uh, Oscar for this role, and I believe he will be uh, getting it. And uh, this movie was really amazing because um, like the whole cast and the crew was amazing people. And I never had that uh, really great experience in my whole career, actually. It's not like a, it was a horrible people I walked with before, <laughs> uh, but uh, it was just an amazing experience. So I hope, uh, you know, if you haven't seen it, I hope, I hope you will see it. And thank, thank you very much. It was a great honor to be here.